Hello. Well, I've been playing with my new Chinese mini lathe and thinking about the problem of uh, putting the servo in a waterproof box. So what I'm thinking is that we have a, an IP68 box like this. Uh, put the servo, mount the servo inside it and have the rudder shaft coming up through a hole here and coupling on there. And so what I need is some kind of uh, thing to put through here to stop water getting in. And that's what I've been uh, doing on my lathe. This brass thing is the first metal part that I have turned on the mini lathe. Uh, so don't watch this video to, to, to learn how to use a mini lathe because I certainly don't know. The idea of this brass thing is that it has a ball race bearing in the top and in the bottom I can press in this shaft seal and then the rudder shaft will come up through here and there will be in here some grease or oil permanently in there and that will provide a seal and then in order to seal this brass thing to the plastic box I want to put an o-ring here and I'm going to thread this so that I can uh, screw it down through the, through the hole in the box so the, my problem today is how to cut a groove in here for an o-ring and the problem that I have is that most conventional tools are much too wide to get in there. So what I've done after reading stuff on the internet about cutting o-rings, and I'll put a reference to that on, on the, the description of this video, is I have cut a very itsy ditsy tool. I have ground out of HSS a tiny little tool in a triangular shape. So this tool will come in like that and uh, this can rotate without fouling anything and hopefully it will cut a groove for the o-ring. Before doing uh, the proper cut I'm just going to do a test cut on the, the outside uh, of this uh, workpiece, um, which it doesn't really matter having a groove in here, I don't need one, but um, just to see if uh, this is going to work. I wonder how deep that is. Not deep enough yet. But it seemed to cut okay, didn't it? Surely that will be enough. Let's have a look at that. Oh, I wonder what depth that is. Let's see. That's 0.35 millimeters, so actually I need it deeper than that in the real one. But uh, is it the right diameter? Don't tell me it's too small or too big. Well I know it's too wide because I just couldn't cut the 
Couldn't make this bespoke tool to be too narrow, otherwise I thought it would break. Anyway, I got bored with uh, doing it. It seems to be about right in terms of the diameter of this thing. I just need to make it deeper. Okay, well, maybe that's enough of a test to do it on the real thing. One of the things I want to do is to thread the outside of this and that obviously will require a 60 degree cutter running along under power control up to here and uh, I've got to stop it somehow before it hits this flange. I've made an undercut here which is uh, I don't know about three or four millimeters wide but uh, I thought before I did anything so dangerous as to actually try this I will do some experiments to see how quickly I can stop this lathe. So what I've got here is a test piece where I've marked uh, in blue the point where I want to stop the, the uh, lathe from moving to the left and I'm just trying to see how far it goes beyond the stop point. So I'm going to press the red button as soon as the uh, cutting tool goes into the blue. Or maybe I press it a little bit sooner. But it clearly overruns by, by 6 millimeters or so. Um, now this is with the pitch set to 2 millimeters. This is because I looked it up on the internet for a 24 M24 metric thread and the first thing I saw was pitch 2 millimeters. What I didn't realize at the time is that um, in fact with metric threads you have a choice of 2 millimeters, 1.5 millimeters or 1 millimeter. So I should have set it to 1 millimeter because this is much too coarse a pitch anyway. And the other thing is that I don't need to run this lathe so fast, given that you can in fact cut a thread by putting a handle on uh, the lathe spindle and doing it by hand at a low speed. I'm going to try to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the pitch from 2mm to 1mm and then I'm going to put the uh, lathe speed down much lower and we'll see what happens uh, that time. Right, well I've changed the pitch to one millimeter and I've put the speed control down, right down on the, the third little black uh, dot from naught. And um, this should give us much more control. So, some cut on it. This is too deep a cut, I shouldn't have put that. Right, so I can stop it. The tool is within 2.9 millimeters of the point that I want to stop. So, so long as this is 2.9 millimeters or more, well, this is exactly 2.9 millimeters. Hmm. It's still marginal, isn't it? Dangerous, but. We could try it. Maybe I could should slightly widen that undercut. This thing is 37 millimeters in diameter and it won't quite fit in the ordinary chuck. So I want to mount this so that I can run this threading tool along here and uh, which means I wanted to mount it in the outside of this and it won't fit. So if I try the other chuck jaws, the external ones. Right, so those are the external chuck jaws and if we wind them right down it still won't grab them on the outermost part of the jaw. 
I can, and indeed I have, been using that, which is absolutely fine, except that I cannot get in here. The fact of the matter is that neither of these 80mm chuck drawers, neither the internal or the external ones, will grip a 37mm diameter thing in the way that I need. Which is a bit of a nuisance. But I have a solution. I'm just installing this uh, um, 100mm four jaw chuck, which I bought from Axminster specifically stated to be suitable for the SC2. It comes with four bolts here which don't fit in anything and uh, serve no useful purpose. But what it does not come with are these three, um, whatever the hell you call those. So I've had to remove those from the 80mm chuck. Well, that's not a problem, but if you're constantly swapping chucks over, it would be better if they gave you the right thing in the first place. The other thing that's problematic with this is that... Um, this is quite heavy, of course. You have to hold it like this, and somehow you've got to get this nut on that thread. Now, I can't, in fact, fit my fingers in here. I suppose if I was a very small Chinese lady, I might be able to fit my fingers in here, but generally speaking it would be much better if they'd allowed another 5mm clearance for between here and here, because what I'm going to have to do now is grip the nut in a pair of pliers and try and hold it down there and rotate it at the same time whilst holding this in order to get the first nut on. This is equally difficult with the 80mm chuck. Every time you take the chuck off you have this problem. Um, I don't know why they did it like that. Well, I think after a lot of fiddling around, I've at last got this workpiece fitted into the four-jaw chuck. The run-out on this now is 0.07mm, which is just under 3 thou. I think that's about as well as I can get it. I'm not going to bust to gut trying to get it any better than that. Probably any adjustment I made now would make it worse. Um, I think that's going to be all right. Not sure whether the chuck itself is, is very well balanced, but anyway, we'll try it with that. And I'm not going to move that part now. It's been difficult to centre. Obviously you have the ordinary problem of centering a four-jaw chuck, but also because I'm not pressing this back against a flat surface, I've had to arrange it so that this flange is level with the, e the end of each of these jaws. Um, that's the only way I could uh, get this right. Um, and that was quite tricky. Uh, I'm not going to use this chuck more than I possibly have to because it's just, you know, it takes uh, ages to get the workpiece set up. Well, I'm cutting this thread very slowly using the um, 29 degree angle that people recommend. Um, Doesn't sound very nice, but it seems to be cutting the thread, which is all that's needed. Question is how 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 on how far do I need to go with this? I don't really know.
Well, I think that's um, more or less okay, don't you? I have no idea if this is the right way to turn brass, but I'm taking uh, off five thou at a time from the internal uh, diameter of this. It's effectively a nut that I'm making to go on this. My biggest drill is 20 millimeters, so I've got to bore this out to 22 and a half millimeters. I don't really like this very fine swarf that it produces. I'd rather it produced a nice sort of uh, long thing. Well, finally I've finished this uh, gland, or whatever you like to call it. Um, the nut goes on fairly okay. It's loose at the bottom and tighter at the top. And I don't know why that is, but um, anyway, it will be okay. So, we can put our O-ring in here. And then we can put this through here. And because I've put this hole in slightly the wrong position, it will only just fit in there, but it does fit. And um, I've made this spindle, which goes into the seal and then up through the bearing, like that, and then we could put, put the servo on there, do that up. Right, so that's that, and um, then the rudder shaft goes on here, it does, right, and uh, we can do these up, and I know Dick will say, you should have a pin here, well, I haven't got a pin. Didn't actually want to drill this 5mm shaft, but we could do if it's really necessary. So that's the whole thing in one go. Uh, I think I'll comment on the suitability of this uh, in another video. But basically it was just um, a project to see if I could use this lathe effectively. Thanks for watching.